Hello, I'm Dr. David Johnson, Professor of Medicine and Chief of Gastroenterology at Eastern Virginia Medical School in Norfolk, Virginia, and welcome back to Viewpoints. In this viewpoint, I wanted to raise the question about, do we really need to do what we've done forever? Because that's the way we've done it forever. And in particular, I mean clear liquid diet before colonoscopy. We know that colonoscopy is very predicate on the, the willingness of the patient, number one, to take the PrEP, that's a dis dissolution for uh, many patients, uh, perhaps, that don't want to do the colonoscopy. And if it's uncomfortable, we know that the, the quality of the preparation may not be as good. And we do know, too, that the willingness to repeat colonoscopy because of an adverse perception of the PrEP may be as high as 50%. Well, clearly, we can do better. And as we talk about getting more people into the colonoscopy screening, in particular in the light of COVID and all the pandemic uh, hype that we have as far as concerns from patients, staying home, doing a procedure that is just put stool into a, a container and you don't have to do a prep becomes more and more attractive to patients. Well, clear liquid diet is something that we've had as a parochial, really tradition of teaching the day before the colonoscopy. I was part of the U.S. Multi-Society Task Force a couple of years ago and we looked at colon preparations and we said in that 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 the low residue diet should be offered as a potential option for patients. It hasn't received as much uh, traction as I think it should. And, and kudos to the, the authors from this most recent study from China, where they looked at low residue diet versus a clear liquid diet for bowel preparation. They did an extremely good job from a statistical analysis looking at nearly 4,300 patients, 20 randomized controlled trials, 17 were published, three were abstracted, and they looked at the outcomes as far as the bowel preparation. They used an incredibly strong performance characteristics related to the meta-analysis standards that we say are high scientific value. Uh, they also looked at uh, high quality and they uh, evaluated each of these studies by Haddad scores. So these are all high quality studies. And then they did a very interesting analysis that was called trial sequential analysis. And this is something that looks at the futility of a study over a, a period of time. And basically what they're looking to is eliminate type one errors or early false positives in some of these studies. So what did they find? Again, the studies looked at only the patients that received clear liquid diet or low residue diet, uh, at least the day before. They didn't qualify beyond that, but nonetheless recognized that was a standard. And what they found is that there was no difference as it relates to the adequacy of the bowel preparation for either of the patient populations, clear liquid diet or low residue diet. The detection rate for polyps was unchanged, sequel intubation unchanged, uh, high-risk adenoma detection unchanged, uh, but there were significantly fewer adverse events in the low residue diet as it relates to things like nausea and vomiting, hunger, uh, headache, and significantly more patients in the low residue diet uh, found it easier to complete the diet and also willingness to repeat. The odds ratios were nearly two for the willingness uh, to repeat, about 2.23 and ease of, of the, the completion was about 1.9. So again, when we look at these a little further with the trial sequential analysis, they didn't, those other endpoints didn't meet the absolute numbers to say that they were statistical by that analysis. And what we can say is, is that low residue diet equaled clear liquid diet as far as the, the adequacy of the preparation. These other markers are very important to patients uh, still need to be further evaluated before we can at least uh, promulgate these as, as real scientific support for the, the idea that we can avoid these things. But what it does mean is, is that we need to look at our diets, in particular our colonoscopy preparations. We can do better. And liberalizing this in particular, not for every patient, because they excluded patients with poor bowel preps, uh, patients that had diabetes, a certain age criteria, no children involved in the study. So this may not be a, a regimen, a regimen that you'd offer for everybody, but start to look at offering it to many of your patients. Jerry Way, a good friend and a uh, and one of the godfathers of colonoscopy, certainly uh, recognized for his expertise over decades, told me one time that he used to offer colonoscopy preparations and include you can have ice cream for dinner tonight. And he was a hero in so many patients' eyes. He told me the patients loved it. They never complained about the prep. But again, low residue diet, look at it, potentially liberalize and start to think about things, certainly for lunch and, and breakfast, maybe the day before the preparation. Maybe you can do it more, but again, look at this, track it and see if we can do more to get patients saying, you know, the prep wasn't bad. 
and we can do better to get these recognitions uh, out to the general population and get more people into colon cancer screening by the best tool, colonoscopy. So from viewpoints, liberalize, don't compromise, and I think we can do a better job. I'm Dr. David Johnson. Thanks again for listening.